Where is God in difficult times? You know, that's a question and that's probably on a lot of people's minds um, at the moment. And um, it's a really good question. And uh, we should we should have asked ourselves this question um, uh, before um, uh, this uh, virus, coronavirus started. Um, but it is a really, really good question. And so where is God? Well, the simple answer is that he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. Um, and the more literal answer is that, well, he's where he always is, um, chilling out in heaven. Uh, he's there with Jesus. He's there with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and he's there um, with all the saints. And so, but that's not what you mean when you think, where is God in, in hard times, is it? But when, we, when we ask that question, well, what we really mean is, well, why doesn't he intervene? And that question sometimes uh, bothers me. And it's not that it bothers me in that I, I don't feel like I've got a good understanding of it, but it bothers me when I when I hear Christians ask it. Um, I understand when other non-Christians don't ask it, but I, I, when I'm in debates with atheists in particular, I get asked the question a lot. Where is God? Why doesn't he intervene? Well, duh. <laughs> That's what I think of when they ask me that question. And, and I have to get the Spirit of God all over me not to not to be smart because... That is the very point of Christianity, isn't it? God did intervene. God did come to earth about 2,000 years ago. Have you read the Bible? <laughs> you know, he sent his son into the world to deal with these things. And that's exactly what Jesus did. In one foul swoop, he came in and died on the cross and dealt with sin forever. But he also dealt with emotional and physical problems such as sin, sickness, uh, and and what we call mental health problems. He dealt with them all in one fell swoop. And that's why we can look to the Bible in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. And we can see that it says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And I love the next verse in verse 6. It says that's why we can boldly say the Lord is my helper. God is our helper. He has never left us. Never. And you know, he says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 38 thereabouts, he'll never leave us and nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. Awesome. So we'll say, well, where is he in these hard times? He's everywhere. He's with us. You know, he is here with us. He has given us faith. He's given us everything that we need in this life, the Bible says in first in Ephesians one and verse three, in First uh, Peter three uh, one and verse three, also He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly place in Christ Jesus. But why doesn't He intervene? You know, people often say, "Well, in times of trouble, where is He? Why doesn't He intervene?" Uh, and we know that He already has intervened. But I think I think people are asking that question because they think well why are these bad things happening and then I would all I would have to say well well why would you think bad things wouldn't happen you know we're living in this fallen world which he says bad things will happen so why do we question that when it happens we just should be saying well yeah he said it would and then we read verses like uh, John sixteen thirty three. I mean you got to read that verse Jesus promised that you're going to have tribulation in this world he said you're going to have it he said, but I am with you. He said, I have overcome the world. I will be your peace. I will be everything that you need in that time. So the question is, is are we going to believe him? Are we going to show up? Are we going to take the faith that he has given us and trust in him? Are we going to fall to our knees in this time and say, hey, God, here I am. What do you want to do with me? I am your servant. Here I am. Use me. Because I trust you. I know you'll never leave me nor, nor, um, nor deceive me. You are with me forever. And it's like, um, you know, uh, you hear the marriage vows and um, where, where the man and woman are standing up there and they're saying, yes, until death, until we part. You know, <laughs> and I, I just look at the divorce rates in the world and say, really? Is that what you meant? But love is this thing that it says, uh, um, we won't part until death. And it knows 
that there are hard times ahead, but you really, until you actually, you know, until they actually tie the knot and they, they realise that, well, actually, I'm living with this person who's completely opposite to me and who thinks differently and leaves his socks on the ground and doesn't do the things he expects me to mummy about and so on. And that's where marriage hits the test of reality. But you're not going to say marriage has failed or, or marriage didn't show up just because bad things happened. You should expect bad things to happen. And it's in those times that we exercise our faith uh, or that we put our faith to practice that we've been exercising prior to that. And we hold on to God. So God has not left us. He is here. He is waiting for us to get on our knees. Um, so let's respond to him. Let's be his voice in this time. He is a good God. He will never leave us nor forsake us.